Hi folks, Mark at Titus. We're back in the dyno room today. We have the 377 on the dyno and we did get uh, some of our odds and ends tied up that we had uh, from the other day. We got our water lines made. We have our throttle linkage finished up. We got our spark plug wires finished up. Uh, and I do believe that was pretty much the majority of what we were uh, looking at doing. Um, but today what we're gonna do is fire up the engine, uh, get it broken in. Do a little bit of testing. We've got a couple things that we're testing. We're testing a new water valve uh, on the dyno today. So the dyno setup is gonna be a little bit of a learning curve as long as, as well as the engine being a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, right now, the dyno floor is a little bit wet because the plumber, i.e. me, uh, forgot to glue one of the joints on the piping for the new control valve. So when I turned the pump on to test it this morning, it sprayed water everywhere and it's a big pump and pushes a lot of water, so it puts out a lot of water in a hurry. But the engine uh, is tight. There's no water that we got water in the engine. Uh, there's nothing coming out of the engine, so that's a good sign. So at least I did a better job on that than I did on the control valve piping. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do is fire the engine up. Um, I'm using our MSD system. Uh, it's a grid system that stays here in the dyno. I'm gonna use that. To begin with, we're eventually going to end up with the owner's MSD grid system with a 7AL box. But uh, for today, uh, getting the engine fired up for diagnostic purposes, I know that system works. It's a known. So if I have any issues on ignition, um, I know it's something, at least I know that system works uh, prior. So hopefully I won't have any uh, glitches in the ignition system. But the first thing we're going to do is I have the crank trigger. Uh, set up the grid system uses a retard system in order to set the timing. So I had the crank trigger set up by eye at 40 degrees before top dead center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a map in the MSD grid software at a flat 20 degrees. And so I don't want the timing fluctuating or anything like that. All I want to do is make sure that when the computer says 20 degrees, the timing pointer says 20 degrees. I know the timing pointer is correct because uh, I set the timing pointer at TDC with the head off the engine. So at that point, uh, once we have everything agreeing, then I can uh, shape a little bit of a timing curve what I kind of think it may have. Okay, the engine fired up, no issues. Um, so right now we're idling at about uh, 20, or excuse me, 14, 1500 RPM. Oil pressure looks pretty good. Uh, water temp. Um, I do have it, uh, some free heater on, so we actually warmed the water up in the engine, so the engine had a it's not starting up 100% uh, cold. And here is the MSD software. Basically, I have a flat timing curve of 20 degrees in the engine. So what I'm going to do is check it. I wish the dyno had um, that we could do 
software. Because when you're breaking in an engine, really what you want to do is you want to put some load on it, take load off. Put a load on it, take load off. And that helps break in the ring. Uh, what you don't want to do is let the engine just sit and idle for a long period of time because that's really hard on a brand new ring. So what we're doing now is we're just putting a load on the engine. And you can hear the engine kind of bogging down. So I'm just manually putting a load on. You see a little bit of water squirt out the back there. That's actually, I don't have a vent hose. Uh, connected on the brake because I kind of want to see when the brake is full right now with our experimentation of the new valve. I want to see how long it takes for that to happen. So, so far the valve is working pretty good. And like I say, I'm just actually taking and putting a little bit of load on the brake. I wish there was a knob, an external knob that we could actually use on this, but hopefully that will come in some later development. Okay, let's get back to our main screen here. And figured out why the dyno would not uh, respond to trying to manually shut off and the reason being is and this is why I want um, or have asked for for the dyno software to be able to put some manual controls in it so that everything is not a hundred percent automatic um, if we go up here to options and we go to our brake setup. If this window is open, when I whack the throttle and I went above my threshold RPM of where I want to start a pull, uh, the system actually started logging. However, with this window uh, open, I needed to close this window before going back to my main channel here because my auto and manual start buttons would not uh, respond. So one of the things that I would like to see in the software, uh, which my other dyno, and uh, I've run several dynos in the in the past, uh, Superflows, D-Packs, uh, etc. One of the things uh, this dyno does, uh, it does start the pull and starts to sweep with a timed sequence from when the engine hits the stabilization RPM. What I would really like to see is another manual control uh, that we can override that automatic control. Um, I know there's a manual feature on here, but I would like to not to have to open up a bunch of windows and whatnot to see it or grab something and click a mouse. What I would really like is a nice button right here so that when I hit the throttle, go in, I like the engine where it is, I hit the button and I start the sweep and start the record. Bring it back, let off the button. That actually is a big benefit to be able to start, stop, record, and stop recording the pull um, when you want to with the throttle. Okay, so right now what I have is that the engine or the dyno software set up uh, to start a pull at 3500 RPM. Uh, I do have a pretty base timing curve just set up in the controller. I've got about 31 total degrees timing in the engine, which is probably a little bit conservative, but that's where we want to start out with. Uh, right now we see we still have good oil pressure. We're about 1500 RPM, so let's actually see what it does.
Okay, so that went pretty smooth. Um, I'm really happy with the way the dyno valve actually operated with some baseline settings. However, I do need to go back, apparently since I've taken the dyno all apart and repiped a lot of things and redone a lot of things, I need to go back and actually recalibrate the dyno because that engine showed about 700 and some horsepower and I pulled the, the handle back on the dyno probably at about 5,900, 6,000 RPM. And like I'm pretty critical of fake dyno sheets, there is no way that engine made that kind of power. So I need to go back and recalibrate the dyno, rehang my weight, and double check and make sure uh, that our settings are all good. So I'm gonna go do that now, and then we'll be back later and do some pulls. So we pulled the exhaust pipe off. Now I've got the, the weight hung on the dyno, and calibration actually looks pretty good. The apparent problem uh, for the engine reading too high was I think I found a button in the software which when I downloaded uh, a new version of the software I probably clicked a button somewhere when I was trolling around in the software. It was adding parasitic losses uh, to the dyno as if it were a chassis dyno. So I think uh, our calibration was good but I think uh, user error on my part, I clicked the wrong button. Okay, so we made our changes in the software, uh, got the engine fired up. So let's see, uh, let's try another pull, see how it goes. Okay, so after that last pull, and we added a degree and a half of timing, so from 31 to 32 and a half, the engine made within two horsepower, and it made within two foot-pounds of torque. Uh, pretty much almost at the exact same RPM, it made the torque. It was about showing the peak powers at about the 40 RPM, 44 RPM different. Uh, it didn't make any difference to the engine. It didn't seem to care. Few minutes later. Well, I just made another pull on the engine. It's a um, couple hours, about three hours after the last pull, after the first three pulls. You can see it actually picked up about nine to 10 horsepower and it picked up uh, about 10 or so, 13, 12, 13 foot pounds of torque. And it did that basically right back in this section 
right in here where it made about 563 foot pounds. But all in all, I think a pretty successful day on the dyno. We ended up this last pull, we were a little bit more. We made 650, that's showing 651 horsepower at about 6,400 RPM. Um, like I say, I let the engine cool down, so the manifold was cool. Um, everything was cooled down from uh, making the previous pulls that we did on it before. So, um, yeah, I think uh, all in all, pretty successful day. We have a little bit more um, uh, work to do on, on the dyno. Uh, as I get uh, some more engines on here and run it and get a little bit for more uh, familiar with the settings on it, I think it'll actually uh, improve the performance on it a little bit. But all in all, pretty happy uh, with the way the dyno ran today considering it's the first time with this valve, first time setting up. So again, I think a pretty successful day.